where you will feast on succulent food. We're going to feast on succulent food. Well, that's awesome. All this and, World Wrestling and this is the first, this is what they had to do because of what happened the, the previous year with the title being on the line. Now it's and like, now, how can you go back to just doing a regular rumble? Begin. And that's where the WrestleMania title shot was born right here. In 30 years of this, this will be the 31st year next month of this title shot shit. Who drew number one? I don't even know, to be honest. Oh yeah, I do. <laughs> Let's just get him over with early. Ric Flair. Oh no. Ric Flair's like, let's get this over with, baby. I gotta get back to Atlanta. Like Bobby is not freaking out near as much. He's not selling it near as much as the previous year. Won the whole thing the year before. Ackland and Flair. I love this. Super short aisle way here. No music for Bobby. Backlund. Look at that jacket he's wearing. Like Backlund was a pretty over champion in his day. Fans aren't even reacting to him at all. Look at this. So they would have been champion at the same time. I think they had a match. I think a Backlund Flair NWA WWWF championship match exists somewhere. Maybe Japan? I think it does. I mean, they had Backlund. Wow, we could Backlund go. Fucking Opie. They had him presented as like very old and washed up he's like 41 he's five years younger than me i think around this time 43 okay three years i mean aj styles is older than bob backland is here apashango number three there's flair and backland Scramble on the ropes. Yeah. Oh, Papa's out. Back to Flair and Backlund. Right on. Pimpa Shango. That's what they should have called him. That's what he should have came back as. Pimpa Shango. Both gimmicks in one. Papa Shango with a hat and a hoe train. Very cool seeing Flair and Backlund. I feel like Flair and Backlund are about the same age. Player 74. Who's next? They're the same age. Million Dollar Man. Ted DBS. This is Ted's uh, last year in the ring. Look at this talent in here right now. Look at these legends. Again, Ted DiBiase, Bob Backlund, and Ric Flair in a fucking triple threat match. That's awesome. Who's next? Let's see who's next. Knobsers. Or Sagsers. No, that's Knobs. Yeah, so the Nasties might have been on their way out too at this point. Well, Nasty Boys have a thing going with Money Incorporated. Yeah, they might have they might be on their way out of the company themselves, these nasties. I'm not sure. I can't remember what their deal was around this time, but. Now Knobs is in there. Oh, a pit stop. Oof. So disgusting. That's something a nasty boy would do. Uh oh, oh, I get it now. Okay. Virgil. Oh, here's your winner right here. Look how short that ramp is. Just six good long strides, and you're there. Shit's 10 yards <laughs> long. That's it. The, the performance center pandemic show ramp was longer. Nobody has been eliminated other than Pimpa Shango. Well, so far the only one eliminated, Papa Shango. Ah, Gorilla. 
Look at there, me and Gorilla always on that same wavelength. Bobby Heenan goes, I hope I'm in good of, is that good a shape when I hit 40. You'll never see 40 again. Yeah. I got news for you. 40's way in your rear view mirror, Bobby Heenan. 40's in my rear view mirror. Oh, and there goes Knobs. He's out. What's your last name? Knobs. For real? All he cared about was doing damage to this capacity crowd. Counts it down. Who now? Who now? Jerry Lowler. And this is kind of, he's just getting in at this point. They would do the thing with USWA with like Vince and Savage and Lawler and all that shit. For all these years, it was crazy to me to see Lawler in a WWE ring. After so many years of seeing him in magazines and being aware of what he's doing. I mean, we have Jerry Lawler, Bob Backlund and Ric Flair, three of the greatest world champions ever. Although Lawler was on a regional level, he was still... The legacy he built was pretty impressive. You know, Jerry the King Lawler is the host of Superstars. I thought Vince McMahon was the host. Jerry Lawler is the host of Superstars. <laughs> and Vince McMahon gets some coffee and stuff. <laughs> and cashews and stuff. Cashews. He's coming out now. Max Moon. Are we skinning the cat over there? Caesar's Palace, the home of champions. I have to come to the curtain yet. I can't hear you. Talk to somebody else. I'm too excited. Henry. Look at there. They'd throw him in there next year, too, trying to get get it. Wow, look at those chops. Jesus. Tenru been in a few times. Tenru has a WrestleMania match. Wrestle Demolition. I remember 92 was kind of interesting like that too. Like you would look at the ring and you're like, holy shit, this thing is teeming with legends. Two, one. Who is it? Mr. Pro oh, and he's sprinting. Oh no. This is so interesting. They have their match the next night, but it's already been filmed. Wow. Mr. Perfect looks so good here. It's so great to see him back in the ring. Back in shape. They should have given him a run with the IC in, in 93. Mr. Perfect is a baby face. That would have been fun. Oh. Oh, he missed. He missed his neck breaker. Yeah. What if Flair wins here and he loses tomorrow? Don't confuse me. I can't think about that now. Don't confuse me. One thing at a time, Gorilla. Skinner, Steve Kern. It is Skinner. He still work for WWE, Steve Kern. He was an official there for years. Don't know if he's there or not. Oh, and there goes Flair. Flair. Your WWF run at this time was probably considered a disappointment but it was still interesting and cool to see so thanks for everything have fun in WCW Bobby Heenan does not want to chat right now oh look at Coco oh man he is he's ready Got his ham MC Hammer pants on, and he's too legit to quit. Got a whole lot of legends in that ring right now, along with Coco Beware, and Virgil, and Skinner. But the rest of them. Actually, I take that back. Coco's a legend. Dude could sing. Nope, Skinner's going to skin the cat. Nice. Skinner is out there in Dockers. He wrestled in Dockers. I recognize the uh, tag on his 
on the back. It would have been awesome if Flair came back to WWF in 1998. I was at Unforgiven 1998 in Greensboro. There was a lot of Flair chatter in the building that night. But it was not to be. Oh, it's Samu being led by the hair by Afa. All the best to Afa. I think Afa has uh, a heart procedure. Was it Sika? One of them. Had some sort of heart procedure, I believe, this week. So all the best to Afa. Hmm. Big knee lift there to Virgil. What did Backlund just say? He got chopped by Mr. Perfect, and he just literally said something to him. I think he just said, what the fuck did you do that for, Mr. Perfect? 26 for Bob. Oh. Me and Elizabeth had the best time talking to him at WrestleMania weekend, John Nord. He was super cool and really kind of generous with his time. One of my favorite interactions of the whole weekend. It was just in passing, too. Just walking by, stopped, said hello. Shared a couple of memories. He was awesome. He was so awesome. Oh, and there goes Lawler. Wow, what a bump by Jerry Lawler. Oh, no, look at Perfect. Look at him hanging on fighting. A good match. DiBiase and Perfect. Give me some of that. Wow, look at, look at that. Oh, my God. Oh, motherfucker. Andy Davis and Alfonso trying to stop this travesty, but they got perfect out. Oh, no. I love how Lawler backs away. Oh, back one's on the outside with Berserker getting worked over with a chair. Uh -oh. I love that Stu and Helen, by the way, are still out there. Oof. Jesus. Samu gone. Courtesy of the Undertaker. Berserker working over Backlund. Uh, we're going to be coming up on when Undertaker is going to get a visitor. Baker's just going to eliminate everybody. Oh, poor Coco. DiBiase, look at this. DiBiase and Taker mixing it up. DiBiase's who brought Undertaker to WWE. They wouldn't really have any other opportunities, I don't think, to be in the ring as opponents. <laughs> I am telling. Oh, yeah, that's right. Backland, they did the thing on the outside so he could sell during the whole deal with Taker here and not get eliminated. Yeah, good call on that, Leo. I agree with you. Taker's kind of the... Oh, God. It's the rooster. Taker's kind of the favorite here, unless he runs into some, you know, giant obstacle of some kind. Terry Taylor is in there. What is he going to do about it? I like that he's terrific now. You're the red rooster, and everybody knows it. Oh, and dumped him over. Interesting to see Terry Taylor and Coco Beware mixing it up, two people who have the honor of wrestling Bobby the Brain Heenan at WrestleMania. Choke slam to Teddy. He's gone. He's about to be gone. Bye, Ted. It's Berserker and Undertaker here. Oh, yeah, I got to get to those, Chris. First, we have to watch... Giant Gonzalez. And here's a fun story about this. Remember how I said I was watching it about Unscrambled? I knew instantly who they were talking about. Look at this. Look at that look. The way Gorilla and Bobby are like, look at the size of him. He's got to be at least eight feet tall. I'm like, it's El Gigante. It's El Gigante from WCW. And then when I found out on the next TVs that I was right, I'm like, ah, I knew it. Because nobody, I couldn't think of anybody that would resemble the way Gorilla and Bobby are describing. 
It's Undertaker taking one step closer. Why are you wearing fur? In a muscle body airbrush suit. Undertaker fearless right in his face. Look at the, I mean, that's pretty insane. I mean, Undertaker's huge. And they would just do the same thing again years later with Great Kali and up, and there's Undertaker eliminated. And this is a great way, and what I loved about, look, Harvey Whippleman's with him. Right in front of Stu and Helen, Giant Gonzalez. And this, to me, was just WWE keeping Taker busy so he would be away from the championship. Even before the Royal Rumble, I was wondering what was going to happen with Undertaker. I'm like, because if he doesn't win it, how is he going to get eliminated? He's too, he's too dominant of a star to just get eliminated in regular fashion. Something's going to have to happen. A big something. Look at Irwin. Irwin's like, I'm just going to take the, the wide shot. And look at how big he is. He's almost as tall as the ring post. Undertaker's just totally motionless here. But yeah, I remember watching this on the scramble, scrambled feed and hearing Gorilla and Bobby talk about this. And I said, I'm like, I bet you it's El Gigante from WCW because he was the only person I could think of that would be eight feet tall and would be a wrestler. Hadn't seen him on TV in a while. It was all coming together. I heard no news of him signing and wasn't following the dirt sheets at the time. But I put it together in my head. That was probably him. And it was. Who's next out? The Tanka, the vanishing American. And now Taker kind of Taker kind of wobbles off, and it took a lot to, from Paul Bear to get him to rise up. That strange animal. And that was what WWE was doing at the time. If you notice back then, Taker was always wrapped up or tied up with some sort of fucking monster, a Kamala, a giant Gonzalez, a King Kong Bundy, King Mabel, you know, and Kama, the Supreme Fighting Machine. He was always just doing shit. People stealing his urn and melting it down and just random stuff, whatever they could think of to keep him away from the championship. Because he's an unbeatable star, so you would start wondering why he's not getting title shots. It's because he was busy facing guys like Giant Gonzalez. It's the other one. It's Sags. Which last name would you guys prefer? Knobs or Sags? They both equally suck. But they're both equally funny. It would be, Sags would be a really unfortunate name when you get old. Who is it? It's the other one. It's Rakishi. He's here to make a change. Or to give you a stink face. Or to eat a raw chicken. Could be anything. Or to dance. There's lots he could do. Ooh, good kick. God, if I was Erwin R. Scheister, I would just hate wrestling in suspenders. That would just drive me insane. Bobby Heenan calls him Tatanka. Jim Cornette called him Tonto, the, the vanishing American. Tonto. Earthquake. I love how Bobby Heenan, he's he's over Ric Flair. He's he's just cutting jokes. Is that is that the horn? Or is that you blowing your nose? Like, he's not even mad anymore? Not wasting any time. He's turned on his own partner. Look at there, Earthquake and Typhoon. I don't recall them being around much after this either. Earthquake would disappear, and he'd, like, return at WrestleMania 10. Have the sumo match with Yoko, and then, like, leave again. So this is probably close to the end of Earthquake. Just well, tugboat versus earthquake. It's not that big a deal. Just shockmaster versus Golga. <laughs> That's all. Ain't no big thing. Oh, 
Oh, he eliminated Typhoon. Earthquakes are stronger than Typhoons, I guess. Oh, that's debatable. I'm surprised Earthquake never feuded with Undertaker. I don't recall them having a match before. Carlos Colon. Caribbean champion. A lot of fire in this youngster. A lot of fire in this youngster. He's probably the same age, if not older, than Bob Backlund. Carlos Colon been a lot of at this time. Let's look up Carlos. Let's look up this youngster's age, shall we? <laughs> a lot of fight in this youngster. Carlos Colon. What are we at here for him? He's the same. He's a he's a year older than Bob Backlund. And Gorilla called him a youngster. There's like oh, Demento over the top rope. Is eliminated at the hands of Carlos and how crazy Come on, Backlund. Crowd does not want him to get eliminated. If anybody could do it, it's Golga. Ito! Not you, buddy. Not you, buddy. The other Tito. Thank you for the $10 CR music videos and channel member. Why do I not know who you are? I usually recognize most of my channel members. Uh, thank you, man. I appreciate that. I recorded this on VHS, but accidentally did it on the two-hour speed. Oh, nothing's worse. SP. Nothing's worse. SP's got great quality, but it's short. Oh, I've been there. I've been there. I've been there. Oh, it's painful. And it cut off right when Slim, Go Slim Good Boy Gonzalez faced off with Taker. I was so pissed. Popped in another VHS for the save. Good. Hey, at least you saved it. I would try to, I would record on LP mode for pay per views. Because uh, SP wouldn't be enough to fit it, but LP mode would. Ooh. But then when I started taping the pre shows, that's Ricky Martel. When I started taping the pre shows first, then I had to go to six hour tapes. And then they came out with eight-hour tapes, and I started buying those, and I would record three episodes of Monday Night Raw per eight-hour tape. And that's how I did a lot of my recording. I had a whole setup for it. But that's a, that's a fun story. Hey, at least you ordered this. I had to watch it on a scrambled scrambled feed. Oh, IRS and Earthquake down goes Irwin. Eliminated. We got Strike Force battling in the corner. We got Tonto, we got Carlos Colon, and Sags in the other corner. Bob Backlund is still in there, along with the giant earthquake. And Rick Martel would be around a little bit in 93. He'd turn back up at the end of the year to put Scott Hall over and give the uh, Intercontinental title to Razor. Look at him holding on. Fans love it. He's a spider monkey. He's a 41-year-old, pale, sweaty spider monkey. That's all he is. Oh, it's Yoko. Not here to break up Beatles. Here to win Royal Rumbles. I bet he's more than that now. Fuji's had him ready for this. Fuji's been stuffing him with rice and sushi for a month now. He's been stuffing him with rice and sushi. Is that going to make you a more formidable opponent? Just stuffing your face. Look at Jack Doan's hair. God, dude. Fuck. What were we thinking back then? Look at that. Look at his ass. The bottom part of his thighs are like a second. He like has two asses. Yokozuna has, is so big he has two asses. A big ass on top and then a smaller second ass growing from the bottom. That's it for Tatanka. Goodbye. Still undefeated at this point, right? I do like the white on Yoko. Looks good. Goodbye, Carlos Colon. Nope. That's for Bruiser Brody. Look at this. Point. Look at the crowd. The whole building is shaking here. I mean, Earthquake is not dwarfed by him at all. He's taller. He's got a good two inches on him. Maybe more. Probably two is fair. Here at the Royal Rumble, I 
see your lips move, but I can't hear you. Oof. Let's watch this. Look at Owen. Excuse me, former tag team partner, or future tag team partner, Yokozuna, while I go attack Skinner. Or whoever's over there. Knobs. Sags. That's right, Yoko never got knocked off his feet, really. Oh, missed. Wow. Belly to bellied him over the top rope. Impressive. Oh, why didn't we get a Doink versus Taker match or feud? Would have been interesting. Yeah, well, heel Doink for sure, right? That's what you're talking about, I'm assuming. Heel Doink and Undertaker would have been interesting because Doink would have had a different approach for sure. And might have been a little bit impervious to the mind games. You know, he's got mind games of his own. Would have been interesting. I would have liked to see him. Would sure as hell make a good comic book because he could be like the Joker. Oh, Repo. Good to see Strike Force in there four years after their breakup. We got Strike Force and half a demolition in there, which is really interesting. Repo Man and uh, Martel. There they go. They're going for this. Is their one chance? One chance to get Yoko. It's do or die, guys. You don't get him out here. Look at Backlund trying to help. And Yoko fought his way out anyway. There he is. Speak of the devil. I love the green. It's very green. Dangerous. Up. Oh, Tito's over the top rope. Is Backlund still in there? Backlund is still there. Backlund is still in there. Oh, brother, a breath of Hitman Hart. Oh, Owen's trying to skin it. Come on, you can do it right in front of Mom and Dad. Are they even acknowledging that Mom and Dad are still on the front row, or do they bounce? The Stu and Helen were out there for the first part of the Rumble. If they left before Owen came out, nope, they're there. Come on, Owen, do Mom and Dad proud. Oh, we get eliminated. That too. Ooh. Ooh. Ooh, he landed on his uh landed on his knee. And there goes Repo Man. He's out of there as well. This is it. Savage. Yoko. Martel and Backlund. I like everybody. Savage, Martel, Backlund, Yoko. Fan of all of them. I think it was a couple of years before this, the model. Oh, and there goes Rick Martel got eliminated the same way a couple of years ago. He had a good showing that year, put in 30 or 40 minutes. Oh, no, no. Oh, and Backlund is out, son of a bitch. Fans did not like that either. Yoko's out there. Or I'm sorry, Fuji's out there with the flag. He hadn't even shaved his head completely yet. He hadn't gone full good mic work yet. I mean, it was a pretty fun rumble. We're down to our final two here. Not the greatest finish we're about to see here, but it was still a really fun rumble with a lot of moving pieces. Come on, you almost got him. Double axe. I mean, don't forget, Savage was just WWE champion not four months ago. So I guess he's probably the right guy to have in here last with him. Down to one knee. Just one knee. Ooh. Savage walked right into that super kick. Belly to belly. Oh. Jesus. Oh, that leg drop is so scary. <laughs> Macho ain't feeling oozy. Nope. I mean, I was watching this on Scramble, but I would I felt like if I was watching this live, I would be like, there's no way they're gonna have Savage win at this point. I mean, it's all this is all Yoko. 
going to be back-to-back -back years of a heel winning. Oh. Yoko's version of the avalanche I thought was so much better than Bundy's because he would drive his back into you. He's down. Savage hits the elbow in a really weird, awkward position. One, two. Oh. I mean, they obviously planned to do that, but it just makes Savage look dumb, the fact that he went for the cover. And it's not like he even landed on him either. Like, it's not like he landed on him and then Yoko threw him off. He landed on him, got up, and then actively went for the cover. I mean, what did Savage, what was Savage's explanation? Well, I had a lot of Slim Jims that day, and I brain farted. <laughs> 